All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, um, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm ever cognizant of what you put on the internet is stuff that will stick around past yeah. your time, right? Mm -hmm. And I was. <laughs> I, I woke up one morning and I, you know, I subscribed to the NOLA.com, uh, uh, whatever, uh, email digest that they send out every day. Yeah. It's funny. They're usually sending out the morning digest when I'm going to bed, um, yeah, just because of the time difference. Um, <laughs> and I see this thing where somebody broke in to this guy's place and stole a hundred king cakes. Yeah, and so I'm going, I didn't read about it. Yeah, and and I was like, <clears throat> you know, okay, that's that's bad to begin with. I mean, crime's bad. Crime's bad no matter how, how you look at it, right? There's there's really no justification. But king cakes, and then yeah, on top of that, the the part that really ticked me off was that everybody was so nonchalant about it. Matter of fact, even the Nola.com, Times Picayune, whatever the hell they are, they even said. Some sweet tooth bandit stole these king cakes, and I'm going, what, what, uh, man, you know, <laughs> see, it, it was like it, they were, they were making light of the situation, and the, even the guy who got robbed, he was like, I, you know, everybody's been so sweet, crime happens, and I'm just, you know, I said, this is where we've arrived, crime just yeah. happens. And it's it's come down to king cakes now, and yeah. it's okay. Well, you know, think about it. Uh, I didn't think about it till you were mentioning it, but after having, I mean, I used the mix last time when we did the king cakes. Yeah, and um, that was a fairly easy recipe to do. Right. But if you're doing, uh, and I'm sure they've got some um, streamlined uh, procedures in the bakeries. That they're using to make these king cakes but i mean it takes a lot of considerable effort to put together a king cake let's say you put what two hours into it if it's streamlined because i'm sure you got you can bake a lot of them at the same time right but then you've got to ice them and all right and um i mean that's that's i mean a hundred i don't i'm sure the local grocery stores here that sell sell them um easily sell a hundred in the day but i mean if it, if you're like a bakery and a, a an artisan that's yeah. that's a lot of uh that's a lot of profit out the effort. door yeah profit and, out the door yeah and and you think about it and the the fact that people just kind of play it off and then, and then oh my god the people justifying it by saying well king cakes cost so much okay so what's going to happen now people are going to start going after crawfish cuz guess yeah. what crawfish are pretty freaking expensive right now and yeah. So now people you can see people getting held up. <laughs> they come off the 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 crawfish farms and on on the way to the processing center they're getting hijacked. Yeah. Oh come on, man. It's you know, it just gets it's so frustrating to see this kind of uh lackadaisical attitude towards crime. And and yeah. I you know, I I I will defend Louisiana up and down because that's my hometown, the home state. And I just don't get it when people don't expect more from their fellow citizens. And, you know, yeah. you could say something like, well, it just starts with a king cake and then it accelerates. But we're kind of going in reverse right now. You know, it's going from yeah. murder to, to king cake theft. And so I guess, yeah. you know, in some ways you could kind of go, well, that's an improvement. But uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I I just I kind of I just get I get. uh I, well, I mean, I, I took I took a lot of takes, and I was about to hit the publish button, and I gave it the twenty four hour rule, and I said yeah. nope because I was like I was livid. I mean, my face was yeah. red. I was so pissed off, and I'm going, okay, Jeremy, do you really want to die on this hill? Do you want to die on this king cake hill? Because you will. You, people are going to look at you like you are just some kind of wackadoo, psycho dude that's you know getting all up in arms about king cake. Well, I mean, you've got a, a unique perspective in the sense because you own the restaurant and you had a brewery. And, I mean, 
if someone were to break in and have stolen, uh, I don't know how you stored your beer, but in yeah, uh, good luck with that. Good luck with that. (laughs) I always thought about that. (laughs) Because you know, I have that. I have that fire truck, right? Do you? you, You've seen pictures of the fire truck, right? Uh Yeah, and the fire truck. It's like, okay, man. I you know, I can leave it. I I went to downtown Seattle talking about taking my beer into my own hands. I, I would go to downtown Seattle and I'd leave full kegs in the back of the truck because unless you are planning to hit me, you're not just walking away with a full keg of beer. That's yeah. like 200 pounds. <laughs> and, they, yeah. and Seattle, downtown Seattle has a ton of streets that are like way steep hills. It ain't happening. I don't even care if you have a dolly with you. It's just not. You you you, you can only go so fast. So I never really worried about that. But but yeah, I mean, any anytime anybody steals anything from you, you you mm-hmm. obviously you you it, it stings, right? And I remember the yeah. first time my car got broken into when I was living in Metairie. It it sucks. And and you know a lot of people just say, well, that's life in the big city. But I just. I even at this age where I've had plenty of incidents where people have stolen things yeah. from me, I still don't accept it as okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> ben says I wouldn't tempt a coon ass. <laughs> you know what, Ben? I you know what? I, I'll accept that challenge. You know what? <laughs> I, I will. I because I bet I, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that they may be able to like drag it behind them if they have like a four wheeler or something like yeah. that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> but it's, oh man, I, it, you know, you just being in the restaurant business, you, you were always aware of, uh, frankly, and, and unfortunately, employee theft. And the employee theft usually yeah. came in the form of, making themselves food or pouring themselves beer and never paying for it. And, uh, that's one thing, but then to have, uh, physical products stolen, we never really had that. We just had where we were in Auburn, Washington. We just had a lot of, we had one guy come in. I had, I had the cutest little turtle, not a live one, but I had a turtle that that <laughs> was was uh, and I say cute because it was it was kind of cute. It was it, and it was uh, it was on the it was on the counter right by the register, and some dude just walks in and takes my uh my my turtle, and and he walks out and he comes back in, and he sits down at one of the tables and proceeds to try and steal one of the fake candles that I have at the table. And I hmm. I went up to him and I, I kind of not rushed him but I just kind of went up to him and said get out give me the candle uh, and I, at that point I didn't realize that the turtle was already gone but um, yeah. and then the dude goes out into the parking lot and starts a fire <laughs> and and you know I I found uh, loaded or not loaded rounds I found rounds you know un, unspent rounds like nine millimeter rounds around the the property. Uh, yeah, it just that's that's the kind of stuff I had to deal with as a business owner more than anything else. Yeah. But anyway, I kind of getting off track, but I just I I just can't believe that people would uh just kind of casually blow off those things. I guess a lot of people think, well, I've got more important things to worry about than somebody stealing king cakes, but I think it's just the yeah. for me personally, it's just the the normalization of that. That's the part that's concerning Mm -hmm. me more than anything else. Yeah. No, like I said, I I didn't, I read it. I did. I read the the headline. I didn't really get into it, but until you were just talking about it and I didn't really start thinking about, because I know like when I would just make jellies to sell, you know, it took me all day to make just 17 jar, not all day, a couple hours to make 17 jars of jelly to sell for maybe six, $7 a jar. And, you know, if I would have had a hundred jars of those things stolen, you know, that's staying five, you know, it's a day and a half of work for sure. me to do that type of thing to get caught up on it. And, um, and you know, and I'm doing that as a, as a as kind of a side thing. And if right. that was your main, your main deal, that's just, yeah. So it's not right. It's not cool. No. Um, no. And I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. That... Now, I mean, it would serve them right if it was like, well, 
<laughs> the big box stores, <laughs> dry, dry ass king cake. But... You know, so you, it's like, okay, well, you know what? You can have that stuff. That, that was yeah. that was meant to go to the shelters anyway. You know, but you know, it's yeah, it's just you know, it it was uh, uh, it it was. I think it was. It wasn't so much the act. The act sucked, but it again, it was just mm-hmm. people's attitude towards it. Like it was like, oh, it happens. And, um, yeah, I just, I, I just couldn't accept that. I couldn't accept it no matter how hard I tried. I just, I, you know, with everything that I've been through over the past year, I had to put things in perspective as far as what's, what's worth fighting for them. The things that are Mm -hmm. not worth getting worked up over. And unfortunately I found myself right back where I was before I got sick. And, um, (laughs) Because I actually had my wife tell me in the car the other day, I was just, I was livid with the parents dropping off the kids at our daughter's school and like, calm down. And I was like, okay, I, I'll calm down. And, and it was, you know, this, so there's certain things that, um, I, I don't know, I guess they kind of trigger me. And before I would just kind of blew it off. And now I'm, I think I'm back to getting triggered. So I got to find that happy medium yeah. where, you know, if, if, these other people don't care about it. That's fine, but yeah, I will. At least if you're recognizing the fact that um, that that it's it's bothering you enough to get to that point again, that maybe you can catch it before it gets so right, so bad, right? Uh, from a reaction standpoint, yeah, yeah. And I think, and and I don't have it to that extent. I, I mean, I do with certain things because what I always tell Astrid and the girls is that, um. You know, a lot of people work with certain groups of folks that are of the same, I don't say same intellect, but, you know, working in the chemical facility, a lot of people are familiar. They're, not everybody's all chemists or engineers. Right. But you have an understanding of a certain amount of of safety and what things are um, good to do or intellectually good to do and and then I lo- then you're you being so people. good about the way you're saying things right now <laughs> i'm, I'm so really I'm impressed that, you know there's a lot of people that you know there there are a lot of folks that you either work around or or um or hang around yeah that have a certain uh you know or of the same probably same type of mindset that you are and and you get used to that as a standard of uh, I call it intelligence or behavior, uh, social behavior. Yes. You know, and then what ends, ends up happening is when you see somebody who should know better doing something that astounds you, it's like, you know, what, what the heck? Mm-hmm. And and that's usually where I have the problem and then I have to real, remind myself like you that not everybody is, uh, you know, everybody hopefully was raised in a certain way, um, but, <laughs> but they're obviously not. a lot of them weren't. <laughs> You been to Walmart lately? Yeah, well, I, uh, <laughs> I avoid that uh, yeah. as best I can. But uh, it's good to know that that's the same throughout the country. <laughs> oh, my God, it's terrible. There's a reason why there's a coloring book for adults called The People of Walmart. Oh, I didn't know that. No, so. yeah, look it up. It's on Amazon. I, I, I <laughs> Ben's just saying... This is the after show. Just say it, David. <laughs> I'm still trying to be respectful to a certain <laughs> certain demographic. Um. <laughs> yeah, they probably aren't watching the show. But. No, they're not. And, well, and and the same thing I get when I um and Ben I know participates in some of these groups that uh, I'm on on Facebook, but <clears throat> there are certain folks that will get on these groups and they will ask, um. You know who's got the best. You know, and, and well, like we talked about before, somebody asking for the, an authentic Philly cheesesteak in Mobile. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, you know, I'm from the I'm from Philadelphia. Where can I get an authentic Philly cheesesteak? Where it all sucks out here, or even criticizing the um, if you're from Texas, uh, criticizing the Mexican food here. Right. And you know, and it's like, there's part of me that's like, well, first of all, why are you? It's like we talk about going to you know if you go to Niagara Falls and ask. Go to a Cajun restaurant, you know, what do you expect to get? <laughs> you know, you, you should know better not to eat the gumbo there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, kind of, <laughs> so it's my, on my, you, my man. My point is, yeah, so 
but you'll see people asking about things um, <laughs> and uh, that have, uh, you know, who, who serves this or who makes this? And I'm thinking, why don't you Google it and figure out how to make it yourself? If it's, you know, I don't know whether certain people have, you know, they claim they have certain skills when it comes to eating, uh, but, um, you know, can we agree that eating and making are different things? Well, true. You know, and, and hopefully we're showing people how to make good things, <laughs> doing it easily, so. but you still got to go pick it off off the shelf and mix it up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the point being is that yeah, I just see some people who are, uh, I read things like that and that aggravates me or, yeah. uh, even when you spell things out, like, Hey, if you want to order these seeds, you need to go here, you know, I, I or we don't have, you know, you're with one of my other specialties with the Meliton. Sometimes people are, you tell them, Hey, there's no more available at this point, uh, you know, well, where can I get them? I'll help you go through the, the, the webpage because there's a lot of uh, comments made on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a search button actually on, in a lot of Facebook pages now too. You know, or just ask for a recipe or ask for how. Uh, you know, just do a little searching before asking. I guess is my my thing. Oh yeah, all the time, all the time. It, you yeah. know what? It doesn't matter what Facebook group you're in. There's always going to be that Yahoo that doesn't want to do the work. <clears throat> and um, back in. Back in this, this has gone on. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's gone on well before we were involved in the the working element of society. But uh, one of the things that a lot of the developers that I used to work with, um, when they would release a new piece of software, they would often somebody would ask a question on like a online forum or something like that. <laughs> the developer would usually respond with, did you RTFM? And, <laughs> it's, yeah. and that actually, that, that acronym has lost, has, has gotten lost somewhere along the way. Um, I, maybe because it's too crass for sensitive yeah. ears, people who need safe spaces and bullshit like that. You know, I yeah. just, um, I, I I don't know, but it was. Look, man, you got you got Google, you got Bing, you got Chat GPT. Now you can, mm-hmm. if you can't find it, I think it's really on you. You know that's yeah. that's that's just the way things work. And I mean, you've got essentially the the Dewey Decimal System to the nth degree available at mm-hmm. your fingertips. There's no going, you know, looking for index cards and then going to find it in the rows and in the library or nothing like that. You don't need right. to have an Encyclopedia Britannica set that you could, you know, kill somebody with if you threw the book at them. Um, you know, you mm-hmm. don't have any of that stuff. You've got the, the got a computer and you've got just terabytes upon terabytes of data available at your fingertips. So, I, yeah, it, it just kind of boggles your mind sometimes when people come on and go. Well, we see that all the time. We see it on, uh, what's that forum? Um, what you got in the pot? Yeah, in the pot, stir the pot. And yeah. I was going to say, if anybody doesn't know what the Dewey Decimal System is, go to Google and type in <laughs> D-E-W-E-Y. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, for, yeah, because, I mean, you, YouTube did tell us that our demographic, our primary demographic <laughs> is 18 to 24-year-olds, so... Have one you day it again recently is it I haven't yet? looked recently no but I one day class we're going to have a lesson in cursive writing and no it's not cursing I, 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 <laughs> it's, it's cursive ben, Ben's a little I know Ben's a little older than that so he's uh, he's bringing the age and yeah. intelligence group up Okay well that's good to know because uh, it would be it would be sad if we had to do the equivalent of TikTok videos to get people's attention to watch the podcast because <clears throat> that ain't happening on my watch. You know, I'm just not doing it. Yeah. You know, what you saw today with my video editing skills about the extent of what I'm willing to get into, uh, because that, that's, uh, <laughs> it, 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 you, what we've seen with like YouTube shorts in particular is, uh, a, a feeding of the monster of sorts. In, in so much that 
<clears throat> I used to make fun of people when I said, when I say to them, you have the uh, attention span of a circus flea. And that was a dig. And nowadays it's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, I live my life in 30 second clips. At, do your daughters do that? Are they are they what scrolling uh, through Instagram and stuff like that? And, uh, and I think somewhat, but not as. I don't want to say that they aren't as guilty as some, but um, I don't know honestly how much they're doing because they got a lot of schoolwork to to do. So if they are on the weekends, um, I think mostly they're doing uh, some gaming stuff that they're doing between themselves. Yeah, but nothing. Um, then to your point, you know, I was listening to uh, one of the. I don't know if it was a podcast on podcasting or, or whatever, but yeah, you know, they were making the point about with the uh, you know everybody having their phone. Yep. Um, with them, part of the thing is is that your ability to bring information to where the people are, which is on their phones, right? And and the thing about it is, if you make it like the si- shiny object with the with the TikTok videos, you know, though there's no, it doesn't take much to you know, attention span short. Yeah, you, they're like, you know, thirty seconds makes you laugh or something. Gives a thumbs up or you subscribe, but then you keep going on, and then it becomes like the. I'm sure it's like whatever the it, it affects dopamine or whatever the, the dopamine, things yeah. that kind of yeah definitely get you uh, you know like any other type of addiction, and so, um, and so you know they're almost advocating you make those kind of things to defeat it, like you said. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's interesting though, as content creators, you you know if you're if you're in if you're on YouTube and I like I said, this is the after show, so it's everything. It's anything and everything. It's not always about yeah. Cajun stuff, but the 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 monetization of sh- YouTube Shorts is ridiculously low. I mean, you have to have hundreds of thousands of views of your short in order for it to make any kind of significant revenue. And when I say significant, mm-hmm. I say north of 50 bucks. Right? Mm-hmm. And that just seems ridiculous to me. But that's the way YouTube works. Uh, so I I don't you know so we're going to I think unless YouTube makes it more of a carrot for us content creators to go after doing short form content i'm yeah. i'm not gonna waste my time i mean that's it's right you know the other the captions and the subtitles I, I i'll do a 30 second commercial to advertise the next episode but i'm not gonna yeah. you know we we had experimented with this and the only time that we ever got any kind of significant views was when i would say some really i well i i didn't think it was controversial but you know, it could be controversial stuff, or when you did your <coughs> your your spinach Madeline <laughs> photograph, no, and it, no, what, Meliton, yeah, the Meliton, yeah, and and it was just like boom, you know, just all these people showed up out of nowhere, and you're going, okay, I don't get you, YouTube, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I just don't get you, but uh, apparently, I need to say something controversial. I mean, me just doing the thing about pecan versus pecan, that was, yeah something that you know some people took offense at and called me yeah. names as a result of that. <laughs> I was like okay I, well, I didn't see all that part. yeah oh yeah really? I, I erased them because they were just they oh. were not pleasant <laughs> people were really mad that I was I was lecturing them and I don't know, I didn't really care but it was I thought it was hilarious at the same time I was like um you so here's the this is gonna this is what I was gonna say about the story about bread pudding oh that i found an article from uh july 26 1910 in the uh, times picayune okay and it talked about 500 old soldiers in uh, johnson city uh tennessee were poisoned by bread pudding that's some bad bread pudding is apparently what it was and i guess these are all maybe uh civil war veterans or something and um my comment was is that they probably had raisins in their bread pudding (laughs) yeah that's right (laughs) they thought it was raisins Uh, it was really gerbil turds (laughs) (laughs) well i think just raisins bad enough that's why i was thinking that you know might get some letters to the editor there 
<laughs> so uh, Ben Ben commented. He said he's bumping up uh, on forty. And uh, Ben, uh, cursive is not Gen Z code. That would be Gen X code. Gen Z code is the uh, my kids and David's kids. I, Actually, uh, cursive is probably greatest, uh, not great, no, probably greatest generation and uh, baby boomer too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we. I had a um, my second grade teacher. She, I, I don't even know how she was still teaching when she taught me, but. <clears throat> I remember her name. Her name was Miss Wee Lucky, and uh, yeah, I, I've, I've had I've had very interesting teachers' last names. But um, I remember taking it was second grade. I was taking cursive, and we were being graded on our penmanship. And I don't think she would be really happy with my penmanship nowadays. <laughs> but yeah. I have computers to kind of blame for that uh, because I haven't had to write things. The only thing I write these days is my signature. And even then, if I can do it digitally, I do it digitally. <laughs> I don't write, yeah. I don't sign my name to anything. So uh, Ben uh, commented here, he said uh, he prefers the long form. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of what we've obviously, since we go over 30 minutes or an hour in a lot of cases. Um, hey, Joanne's a baby boomer. Oh, there you um, go. We, so she, she speaks that, our language. You know, like we're talking about from the standpoint of, um, the audience that you're attracting, uh, you know, part of what we were hoping to do with, you know, on my the YouTube videos I do on my channel and, and the ones we put out together and even the ones that you do on your, um, equipment and stuff for the, uh, podcasting. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a, it's a, it's a deep dive in the sense. It's not like PhD deep dive type of, you know, maybe, to the now I don't know some people may argue about that with some of my melaton stuff but the uh <laughs> but really what is <laughs> it's trying to present uh something that if you were really trying to give somebody some information that's of value give them some of the background give them the um, the history yeah or even how to make it you yeah know, I could tell you all the steps on how to make the boudin I'm gonna make in three weeks yeah um and I you know and I'll probably do a video someday on it um, and to do that would probably even edited down would, I could get it down to an hour. But, you know, the thing about it is, is that, you know, if I did it, yeah, it showed in 60 seconds, but it's, it, uh, grossly underplays the amount of work involved with it. And, um, some people obviously are misled that it's going to either be that easy, but then it also just gives you, it's not even an overview. It's just, a you know blurb of such and so you don't get any education it's more of a well, it's like eating pure sugar versus eating you know a, a complex carbohydrate you know you'll you'll get a little uh, um energy from it for a little bit but then you know you just end up crashing from it as opposed to getting something that'll sustain you and carry you on sure and I'm being too philosophical there but well, well it's, it's, yeah the, it's okay i was i was gonna pull you back a little bit and I just, <laughs> it's like, hey, going off the, the rails here <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, for those of you who are still tuned in, this this is this is actually a little bit of uh, what's going on at the end of the month. Uh, a little bit of a homecoming of sorts, but more than anything else, the last time you and I saw each other, I believe, was at our grandmother's funeral, yeah, which was twenty was years, ago. Exactly. 20 years uh, ago, earlier this month, or yeah. last month, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we we've gone that long. I mean, you would never know it by the way we go back and forth on on the show together. But yeah, this is kind of it's kind of nuts, yeah. you know. <clears throat> our kids. I've never met your kids. I think I might have met Nicole, but I met she, Nicole once. Yeah, right? yeah. She would have been at grandma's funeral, but she would have been two or three, about two. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I think yeah. I've met your wife two or three times maybe probably yeah. yeah so and yeah. I, I know I mean, you've never met my wife face to face so are no, no, pretty much any of my kids i mean with the exception of when they've been on the show here so yeah, yeah it's kind of it's kind of weird it's weird that this is this uh, this show is is brought elements of the family back together and you know yeah. I, i'm really hoping that what happens or what transpires as a result of us getting together is a 
you know, a continuation of that because of the, yeah. the family's been not fractured, but I mean, we've all been in our own kind of directions yeah. as families often do. Yeah. And not fractured in a, in a, any traumatic event. No. Cause the fracture. It's just no. life. Yeah. It's just life. Um, exactly. Every, everybody pursued different uh, careers or different yep. aspects of things. And, um, and, you know, like you said, we'll have cousins on next week. Um, That's right. And, I haven't seen them in person since uh, Uncle Paul's funeral. That's been I, I three years. I saw I saw Paul third uh, at a Saints game. Okay, and that was when we brewed with Zach. So that would have okay. been prior to COVID, sometime around twenty eighteen. I think 2018, yeah, 2018, 2019, something like that. So that's the last time. And then I've seen uh, him. cousin Danny's supposed to be at the Boucherie too. I think. Oh, cool. Um, okay. Visiting. So that should be fun. Know, and I don't know how long since you've seen him. I mean, I saw him I, about that. Well, at his dad's funeral too. Yeah. Yeah. Well. In any case, I, I think it's I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and and I, I I'm I'm looking forward to. I I talked to a, a few folks in the family about doing you know some interviews and things like that and i think it'll be fun to start that mm -hmm. process um yeah i i used <clears throat> the camera i'm talking on now i used that yesterday for the for the taping of the uh making the bread pudding and it turned out pretty good that I, I was fighting with the autofocus a little bit yesterday but uh it's a good camera it's just that it's recording at 4K at 60 frames a second at what they call <clears throat> it's 10 bit, 200 megabits per second. Uh, so the files are massive, right? And yeah. so I need the the storage space and everything like that. So I'm trying to figure out. I was spent most of the day yesterday yeah. just moving stuff around so that I could clear out my hard drives and get everything ready to go because I plan to do a lot of taping and and bringing the drone and hopefully i'll get a chance to hang out with the bayou wild guys and we'll take our drones yeah. up and you know do some filming uh, i think that'll be yeah. really cool uh, so yeah i'm like yeah i'm hoping to like i said i keep reaching out to some of the folks we we've, we've got some we know who will be at the boucherie yeah who will gonna be willing uh to, to give us some time and talk um yeah we got some probably interviews. gonna be those who we don't even know who are gonna be there that um, you know, if I know who they are, uh, yeah. definitely will steer you in that direction. Um, and, uh, the, like I said, I mean, the, 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 even though I'm closer and, and can do it in a day, the problem is with some of the other things I got going on with work and, uh, some upcoming time I've got to take off with, uh, my mom's knee. Right. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to be able there the, the whole time you're there. Um, and if it would be great if I, if I could figure out if you were doing something, you know, closer to, uh, mandeville or or that or covington area uh on one of the other weekends or something if if the schedule permitted if i could get over there too at that same time but you know just those would be you know some things that would would be enjoyable to do um to especially like some of the boudin tastings we were hoping to do and right stuff like that. right yeah i can just imagine it now it's where it's some guys like crawfish farm and where it's kind of it's a covered like almost like a, a carport area where they're doing all the processing. And the only way yeah. that you're getting any kind of air moving in there, these big ass fans that they put in the shop yeah. and the microphones, I don't care what you do. will pick up every sound and I'm just not going, Oh, I don't want to deal with that. So anyway, yeah. that's, that's my own nerding out type thing with, yeah. with respect to, well, to I mean, take. and that's, you know, going back, I know we keep jumping around on different subjects, but you know, talking about creating the content and, in the long form things and um you know until you have to do it whether it's actually making uh you know a a king cake from scratch or going and trying to do an interview and film um the uh <laughs> the film the uh you know something in an outdoor setting or in an industrial setting um yeah you don't really realize that it's a lot harder than it appears and and you know and i i have a lot more 
appreciation and respect for the folks, especially, you know, like we talk about Chris Lecoq with, yeah. um, Bobby wild and, and, uh, Don Dubuque and, and Martha Spencer, um, yep. cause they have to put out the quality yeah, type right of things then. you see on Bayou wild and the places they go, even though a lot of times it's outdoors, you know, either they're shooting, um, guns or they got the uh, back of, you know, motors on the back of the boats. Yep. Um, helicopters things i mean there's all kind of in even some of the uh, food, uh, seafood processing places they go to you know you you don't really appreciate that until you try to do it yourself and they make it look so easy and um, yeah. so it gives you a whole other perspective and so yeah so i bet you anything even as much as you're going to plan and, and i won't anticipate. be ready i won't be ready yeah you, no. you won't be yeah. you know for all the things and sometimes it may end up with you know, if it's nothing more than just getting it on your, your cell phone or something, you know, that may still be better than, than, than nothing. And I'm hoping to do, uh, I've got to test out my antiquated, uh, equipment for one or the two of the potential opportunities we might have to interview somebody who's going to be coming my way, uh, from over there and see if I can go over and, um, engage them, uh, if everybody agrees to it. Uh, so I'm, I'll need to start testing that in the next couple of weeks too, just to see if I can even do that. And, uh, we just need to, would, we need to land a cushy sponsorship gig so that we yeah. can buy some equipment for you and go roaming around the countryside and meeting these people with hey. a little mobile studio. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. I, mean, I know this I'm, is exactly what you wanted to do as you were getting closer to retirement as you, you, you know, you want to go in the backwoods and interview folks, uh. Hey, that's a lot more fun than uh, sitting at a desk all day too. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I can I can appreciate that. Like, even though I sit at a desk, I I like my desk. Um, <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of fun. Well, you're stuff. sitting at a desk. <laughs> yeah, but you, you you've created your surroundings. There. Yes. Sometimes when you're walking into other surroundings, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and my surroundings in my little studio. <laughs> here, <laughs> needs needs a lot of revamping, as we could see earlier with the. Uh, <laughs> The faux wall behind me. <laughs> do, do you take that down after every show? No, I no. have to move it back and forth. So I need to, I need like about a month off where I can just clean up a lot of stuff yeah. and, um, and just, and, and redo it, uh, between everybody else's schedule and mine. So, um, you're so could, thoughtful. You are. <laughs> I just like, I just be like a tear ass through the house. Just, you know, just <laughs> It's, you know, that's, I, and I'm sorry, honey, I, I am very considerate, but there are some times when I just want to get stuff done. And so I, oh, I mean, I do that too, but yeah. at the same time, it's just that the, I, but the thing is I got all those other side things I've got going on with the family. Um, yeah. Yeah. Project at the end of, in August that I'm, I'm trying to get done too. So I'm, I'm actually sitting in the same spot trying to do all that. Um, and so hopefully that'll, uh, keep moving uh forward and then um a few other things trying to you know at least lose a little weight before you know, help my mom with her knee and uh having to be able to you know with physical therapy and stuff sure but, sure um yeah so it's all balance <laughs> yeah it is it is yeah right. joanne has a suggestion about maybe working with spuddy to make a dish from washington state and uh uh, Joanne, I, I appreciate the sentiment. Um, no, <laughs> like, I, just, I, you know what? I am so, th this place is so devoid of real Cajun culture and food. I need to be working hard to bring more of that up here, not the other way around. <clears throat> kind of like Louisiana is made up of hundreds of years of different cultures coming together, living together, sharing recipes, sharing uh, historical backgrounds. Uh, Seattle's at the infancy stages of that. And all you people from Seattle that give me crap about me Raz in Seattle, you know what? You deserve it. So get off my back. It's, it's this place is, I, I don't get you people sometimes. I really don't. Of course, the, one of the things that, um, that you, I found here that I like is the, like the cedar plank salmon. So they'll take the mm -hmm. cedar and cedars are very, cedars like Cypress right down in Louisiana. Yeah. It's, it's very prolific and, and you find it, you know, a lot of buildings are made with it. A lot of roofs are made with it. Um, 
and and it's it, you, you soak it in in water and then you put your salmon on top of it and salmon tastes like somebody's hope chest um but it's it's not bad. <laughs> it's like, I, I, I'm sorry. I, it, I can't, maybe I had too much of the uh, the uh, bread pudding. I, I'm kind of on a tear right now. But I, I just, I feel like there. You know, when I think about bringing stuff from here down to New Orleans, I think there's a lot more that New Orleans and Louisiana and the Gulf South in general have to offer Seattle than the other way around. There's only. There's only one Cajun grocery store here, and they do extremely well, but all the other stores are very specific ethnic stores. There's, there's, um, there's of course, there's Indian, there's Chinese, there's Japanese, there's uh, a lot of Asian cultures are here, but that they're, they're not mixing, so to speak. Right. The, the, that's one of the things I love about Louisiana is that it really is the original fusion food yeah. for the states. Right. <clears throat> All these different cultures came together and and that food still exists in one form or another. Whereas here, mm-hmm. everything's just so disjointed. Uh, and again, I, there are some things like there's a couple of steak places here in town that are amazing. And yeah. uh, not to say that New Orleans doesn't have or Louisiana doesn't have good steak but i would say that my best experience with steaks has existed outside of louisiana yeah so wow this has been an interesting after show <laughs> it's, it's, the white like, chocolate man <laughs> i know it's, it's just kind of this is like um maybe i should build myself a soapbox or something and then <laughs> stand on it and i have to you know hold something you know you remember, like, there are certain times when you wanted to speak, you had to hold something, like... You yeah, know, it was a talking stick for yeah, like, the uh, Native Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as long as you had that, you had the floor, right? And yeah. Except I can't hand you the stick through the camera. That doesn't quite work the same way. No. So, uh, Some of the points that, uh, in between Joanne and Ben, I mean, if, you know... Once again, you know, we appreciate you watching, but also, you know, some of these mixes and some of these things that you've tried... Or things that you're curious yeah. about uh, brands, you know, let us know because we would definitely be interested in uh, looking for them. We we've got our ideas and we see things that we want to try, and um, you know, obviously, like he said earlier in the first hour, we're gonna gotta get through the uh, the Mardi Gras, the carnival season, to uh, with all the sweet and decadent stuff, and probably, you know, I don't I don't know how easily you'd be able to do if we want to do any seafood dishes and the. Uh, well, part of the time you'll be in Louisiana, so uh, you would probably won't be as much cooking as it will be uh, reusing some of the uh, the interviews and stuff too. At, at uh, to a certain extent, yeah, yeah. Then I, just... I don't think Uncle Larry has made it out there to Washington yet, but believe it or no. not, actually, I have. Uh, I actually had my first opportunity to meet Uncle Larry in person uh, three or four weeks ago, and um, working with uh, actually, he's one of the people we're trying to get together with. And uh, do something with it's. Uh, I'm gonna try and do as much as I can because I I feel like uh, I just want to you know I, I want to get as much content as possible. I I think that there's a there's so much to talk about and we're just getting started. I mean, when, deep fried alligator bites or something. It's really good. Um, traditional Cajun, you know, it's even a uh, I've heard of somebody doing alligator boucherie traditional cajun i'm not mm. sure but um is it a you know is it a good uh spin on the food and, and a uh you know it's still probably pretty tasty yeah so, um th- those type of things would uh that gave me the opportunity to do that but then the other thing is that a lot of times when i go to the um <laughs> as long as you cut the fat off it tastes much like chicken <laughs> um sometimes like tough chicken but then the uh I'd I'd go to the local grocery stores and get some of the mixes and frozen products. Yeah. yeah. Just because instead of going out and eating by myself or something, there were certain things that just like we're doing now, I had the curiosity to say, you know, I wonder if this thing's any good. And um and I'll go on record and I'll say because I've said it before and I've told him in person, is that a lot of the frozen John Fulce uh 
products, the, the gumbos, red beans, and rice. Um, I mean, I would go and get a little pouch of Uncle Ben's um, uh, par, and that wasn't parboil. It was already all you had to do is microwave it. Yeah, and and I'd, I'd put that in there, and then I'd take the container, and the, I'd take half of the one of the things of John Fols's stuff, and I'd heat it up in the microwave, and I'd combine them. Yeah, and even in that kind of um, very rudimentary way of heating it up, I mean, I guess it was better than being over a, a candle, but um, heating it up, it was really very tasty and, and really good and authentic. So now you're paying uh, one of those containers is maybe 32 ounces for the, the, the soups or the gumbos, anywhere from 12 to 15 dollars typically, and it's supposed to feed probably two. You know, it's still not a bad deal, and it, it's uh, you know, it's on the higher end. Not well, but, um, yeah, especially considering how much money it costs to go out these days. You know, yeah, and so, uh, so anyway, the, the point being is that we know that there's some some good things out there, and uh, that give you a good taste. And yep. so, uh, hopefully, in your case, when you when you're there, you know, maybe that's some of the things you get to try that you can't when you're you're uh, not at home. And then the other. You know, opportunity is once you have had those uh, those uh, opportunities to try them, which you're also hoping to do in in the early days. As was talking about, even finding ways to get those up to your uh, area. Yep, our neck of the woods might be interested. Yep. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, it opens a market for these other people too. Yeah, and and I think that that's that's probably one of the biggest challenges for a lot of people that live up here is that the access to the ingredients and then also having things kind of curated a bit because there is a lot of stuff that you can get yeah. and there is a lot of good stuff and there's a lot of junk and you just like anything else and if it takes somebody like <clears throat> us to sift through all that stuff and kind of come up with recommendations. I mean, we're not the end all be all experts on it, but I know what I like. And yeah. uh, generally speaking, I know that what I like is usually popular opinion in with most locals or yeah. people who grew up in, in Louisiana. So, uh, I, I don't see any reason why I don't, you know, my, my opinion isn't as valid as anybody else's, but uh, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll play it by ear, but I think first things first, I gotta, you know, we're going to get down there. We're going to do what we can do, expose as many people as we can to, you know, who we are and then yep. get as, get as much, ex, uh, uh, exposure onto us as far as, you know, the things and ideas. And even if we can't film everything, I know we can't film everything, but even if we can't film 80% of what we intended to or what I intended to if I get, you know, yeah. even you know, somewhere close to 50%, I'll be happy. Yeah. I will be. Well, it's better to have a big list and uh, only get a small amount of it done than have no list and right. not get any of it done. Right, exactly, exactly. So I am yeah. I am going to go to Camellia, though. So I, I think the only one we're hoping that we can get, uh, it, we got to get um, Bascoli on there. We're really, I really want to visit those guys because they've been so good to to us. Yeah, they've been great, and, and their products are great too. And their products are great. I still, I had some uh, olive salad last night. <laughs> I'm sitting there eating olive salad with because we had leftover saltines from that crack show, and, oh, yeah. and I'm so I'm eating the saltines with the olive salad. And I'm sure my my uh, my body was like, what the hell? Because it was jalapeno. Uh, olive salad too. I was like, "What are you doing?" And that, that earlier in the day, I'd had that scorpion Tabasco sauce on yeah. the the chicken. Yeah, so my body's just like, "What? You suck." <laughs> well, the uh, like I said, I'm hoping to. Uh, I'll be doing muffaladas on Mardi Gras. Yeah, uh, they will eat that. Um, but then the picture from the past came up uh, from the old Semolina's uh, Mardi Gras pasta. I don't know if you ever had that one when they were open. Um, the I, the I haven't had. I know of it, but I've I've never had it. No. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. they had one here in Mobile, and it was really good. Yeah. And um, you know, I wouldn't mind doing that again with some of the olive salad that I've got, um, even outside of the uh, Mardi Gras standpoint. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. 
Yeah. Joanne, you mentioned the char grilled oysters. I, I'm not a big oyster fan, believe it or not. Um, I, I have tried the char grilled. I've, I've actually been to, well, of course, Drago's. Um, I went to the Acme, one. Maybe. I've been I've been to Acme as well. I don't think I had char grilled oysters there, but when we were visiting for the brewery thing, that was uh, that was. I think we stay or we went to the the you know the what is it the Hilton that's right at the foot of Canal Street right on the river there, you know the one yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, it's right next to the old World's Fair site. Anyway, yeah. they have a Drago's inside there. And <clears throat> I just found out that they closed um, They closed Drago's in Lafayette. Or it's closing oh, this really? month, yeah. Huh. Yeah, apparently that location is cursed or somebody said something to that effect. I don't know if that's the case or not. Or maybe people just weren't, you know, into it. But, uh, yeah, they're closing yeah. Drago's. But I've been to the one in Metairie, too. And yeah, I mean, it's all good food. I mean, God, man, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Um, man, if we can get over to Bears, Po' Boys in Covington, uh, that their roast beef Po' Boy is insane. It's so good. It's, uh, God, I gotta, I gotta stop. Focus, focus. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot. There's, a, there's so many yeah, things, got, you know. It's gotta like, go through Covington on the way back to Mobile. So that's right. That's right. I just gotta get back to Baton Rouge somehow. So, uh, we'll yeah. figure that part out later. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and call it. We are now officially, uh, two hours in. And, yeah. um, and now I have two hours worth of content to edit. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, wanted to, uh, you know, give a special shout out to uh, both Joanne and Ben for participating. It makes the show go uh, so much better when we have people participating. It's just fun to interact with people yeah. that uh, that share the same passion we do and um, and and uh, have a little bit of sense of humor at it, like we do as well. So, um, thank you very much for for being yep. a part of the show this week. Uh, again, next week will be uh, Saturday. We'll do our normal show. We're, we'll, we'll re or we'll air the interview that we did with uh, our cousins next Saturday, yep. talking about Bacchus. And um, then on Sunday night, I just have to figure out the logistics, and I don't know if it's going to be a very long broadcast anyway because uh, I have a feeling that most float riders have imbibed to some point uh, <laughs> before getting on the float. And so even if, if I can get even a live feed from the float for 30 seconds, I'll be happier than a pig in poop. So, you know, that's... Um, that that would be great. So uh, we'll we'll post details about that when we know a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that that should be fun. That should be a lot of fun. And then on Mardi Gras Day, uh, this is mainly for people outside of Louisiana or people not going to Mardi Gras. But what I plan to do is uh, pull in various online streams and broadcast the entire day um, from from here in Seattle. Um, but I've, I've got a number of live streams, whether it be television stations in New Orleans or bourbon street cameras or whatever. I've been doing this for years. So I know places where I can hop on and watch the live feed from what's going on in New Orleans. Yeah, I used to do that with in the, in the restaurant and bar, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah. And it was fun. People used to come by and watch it. It was, you yeah. know, for what I think they were, cool. they were waiting for somebody to get flashed. I, I think that's what was going on, and and it did happen. There we, we had ten foot screens, and there were a couple of times where it was like, whoa, okay, uh, no kids saw that, right? Okay, good. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, again, thanks a lot, guys. Um, have yourself a great week, and uh, hopefully, we'll catch everybody um, next weekend. Well, we do it all over again. All right. Thanks yep. a lot. And thank you, David. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Jeremy. All right. No problem. Enjoy it. All right. We'll see y'all later.